Well, good morning. How's everybody? So good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We do want to welcome those who are joining us online. If this is your very first time, we do want to give you another special welcome. Church, can we put our hands together for our first time guests? Uh, we kicked out a new series last week on faith. Anybody enjoy that? I hate asking that question usually because then it happens like that. And everybody's like, three people said yes, so, but that's fine. Hope you guys had some, uh, some literally learned some practical things from that message you can apply to your day-to-day -day life. Because I want you to know that's my, really it's one of my ultimate goals when I prepare these messages for you is that I want to teach you something that you can apply what you walk through on a day-to-day -day basis. Can somebody say amen to that? Well, do you mind standing to your feet if you're able to? If you're new to reach, we like to stand as a way of showing honor and respect to the Word of God as we read our opening verses together on the screens. Uh, Romans 8.12 says this, says, So then faith comes by hearing. Everybody say hearing. hearing. And hearing. hearing. And hearing. hearing. And hearing. hearing. And hearing. By man's opinions, by the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Well, the title of my message this morning is How Faith Comes. How Faith Comes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything that's taken place so far. And God, I just thank you for what you're doing in our church. We pray that you continue just to have your way over the next few moments, Holy Spirit, that you would use me to speak the truths found in your word. And Father, we thank you that seeds be planted in somebody's heart, and Holy Spirit, that you'd come along and water it. And Father, we thank you we would see our faith grow to a whole new level. And we thank you for that in Christ's name. And everybody said, well, before you're seated, greet somebody you haven't said hello to yet. And listen, high five seven people. Listen, hold on. Last week, some of you didn't even do this. Seven. Seven. I want to do a quick recap of last week's message. Uh, let's look at the series, excuse me, the verse we're building this whole series around on the screens together. Uh, Hebrews, we use King James Version. I told you this is the version that uh, Farron was around when Jesus, when they came out of there. And I think it was, was, was it John the Baptist we talked about who uh, translated that for you? So, yeah. Uh, now faith. Everybody say, now faith. Now faith. Say, now faith. now faith. You guys were quiet during worship, and so I'm going to make you participate during the preaching part. So. I don't know if you had a long day, you got out there in that sun like I did and got a little bit burnt. It's fine, but we'll be okay. Amen? Amen. Now faith, Amen. it says it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So last week we answered the question, what is faith? I told you one of the best ways to find out what something is, is to find out what it's not. We endeavor to look at what faith isn't so we could have a better understanding of what faith is. 2 John 8, chapters 4 through 9 says this. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, everybody say his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. I told you last week, this scripture reveals, in my opinion, one of the most important things that you and I need to know about faith. I encourage you to write this down. Faith begins and ends where the will of God is known. Amen? Faith ends and begins, excuse me, faith begins and ends where the will of God is known. Our faith is based solely upon the promises that we can find in the Word of God. In other words, let me say it this way. God's not obligated to, God's obligated to His Word, not our preferences or our desires. Let me say that again. God's obligated to his word, not our preferences or our desires. We learn that faith isn't hope. A lot of us get hope and faith mixed up. They think that they're operating in faith, but really it's hope. I told you this, the best way to know if you're operating in faith or hope is to realize that hope 
will always be in the future tense and faith will always be in the present. Hope is I'm believing something's going to happen. Faith is I'm believing it's already happening because I prayed for it and I know I prayed for the will of God to be done in my life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Write this down. If it's not now, it's not faith. In other words, if you're not believing God for him to do it now, it's not faith. You're still operating in hope. And realizing the difference between faith and hope is so important. And here's why. Faith is how you and I receive from God. Let me prove it to you. Mark 8, 22. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Notice he didn't say here, hope that you will receive them. He said that we are to believe that we are to receive them. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. So what God is saying is, if you and I are going to see our prayers answered on a consistent basis, we must learn to move from hope to faith. Do you hear me? Hope to faith. The prayers that God is going to answer, listen, aren't the ones that you ask him for, it's the ones you believe him for. Do you hear me? The prayers that God is going to answer aren't the ones that you ask him for, it's the ones that you're going to believe him for. You and I must become convinced that it's not a matter of if, but when we will see what we are believing God for to manifest in our lives. We must become convinced, listen, we sung about it today, that God has the power to supersede what we see in the natural taking place in our lives. Amen? He has the ability to bring it forth into the natural realm. Can somebody say amen to that? I wish I had time to recap the whole message. I feel like it was really just filled with some practical stuff, but we don't. So I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel to watch the full message if you were gone or you happen to be serving in Reach Kids. Now, I was going to start talking about different types of faith this morning, but before I do, I really feel like I should share some other important aspects of faith. And really, I think the most important aspect of faith, but to start knowing what faith is, is um, how you and I can increase our faith and how faith comes. It's important to know what faith is, but how many know it's also important to know how we get faith? Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. So, Let's take a look at something. Luke 7, 51 says this. One day the apostles said to the Lord, we need more faith. Anybody there? We need more faith. And then look at this. Tell us how to get it. I think we can all relate to this statement that we need more faith. And somebody please tell me how we can get more faith. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful the Bible teaches us exactly how to increase in our faith. Can somebody say amen to that? Anybody interested on learning how we can increase our faith? Anybody other than the other three people interested in how we can increase our faith? All right. Well, let's look at our opening verse again on the screens, and it reminds us how we can increase our faith. Romans 1 says this, so then faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we can see clearly from this verse in Romans that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen? Amen. And I'm sure if you've grown up in church for a, a decent amount of time, you've probably heard a sermon on this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I want to talk about this today, but I want to share it with you from a different perspective from this verse for the, you to consider. The Greek word that Paul used for the word here actually refers to a couple different things. It means this. It means to hear more than just with your ears. I thought that was very interesting. And it refers, this one was good, to listening to understand. refers to listening, to understand, and hearing with more than just with our ears. So I want to talk about the first part for just a minute. 
Paul is telling us not only to listen with our ears, but what he's saying is that we need to listen with an open heart and with an open mind. But here's my question for you. Why do you think Paul would tell us that we need to listen with an open heart and with an open mind? Uh, you don't have to answer. It's, I'm being silent on, on purpose to just make you think about it. Let me show you why I think he says it. Mark 17, 23 says this. Making the word of God of no effect. Making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. I don't know about you, but when I read that, it's scary to think that you and I can limit what God wants to do in our lives. And what it says, there's things that you and I can do that make the word of God to no effect. So here's something for you to consider. I think that our church traditions can become more meaningful than the word of God if we aren't careful. I, there are traditions that I think are great, but listen, if our traditions begin to make the word of God become no effect, you know what? You and I are in trouble. When churches give more attention to their traditions than the word of God, it will limit what God will do in our church and in our personal lives. Listen to me. Some of the most dangerous words ever spoken in a church setting were the words, this is how we have always done it. This is how we have always done it. We accept change easily. Or I should say this, we accept change better in other areas of our lives except for church. Think about that. Change is a natural part of life. We accept it. We embrace it in a lot of areas. How many actually have air conditioning in your house? How many are thankful for that change? <laughs> Did anybody, is anybody old enough to grow up where you didn't have air conditioning in your house? You raise your hand. Wow, look at this. We got a, several of you. How many of you have air conditioners in your car? How many of you remember not having an air conditioner in your car? Here's one. How many of you can remember rolling down your window? Huh? Now, just push it. I probably shouldn't ask this one. No, I'm not going to ask this one. How many are thankful for indoor plumbing? I'll just say that. I'll just say that. Huh? See, change. Yeah, that's great. But somehow, sometimes in the church, when we go to expect change to take place in the church, it's like, but this is how we've always done it. And according to the word of God, if we're not careful, it can limit what God wants to do in our lives just by having that mindset. Listen to me. God's the same, but how he does things can change. God himself will never change, but how we do things will. We should be thankful for change. How many of you grew up in the 70s and 80s remember those women's hair? (laughs) 
How many of you are old enough now that you are starting to see styles and trends come back in that you thought you would never see come back in? That's where I'm at this stage of my life. I see people doing stuff and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I saw some of the other day posts on social media where they were showing how to roll, tight roll your, the bottom of your jeans. Anybody remember tight roll on the bottom of your jeans? Man. These things come back. And we're okay with that. You know what? What we're not okay with? Sometimes making changes in the church. That's why Paul is exhorting you and I to, to be open to what the Word of God teaches us. Listen to me. Even if it goes against your church's tradition. Here's something for you to consider. God's Word should always take precedence over any tradition that a church may have. And I know from a non-denominational church like this, we have a lot of people coming from a lot of different backgrounds, from Baptist to Presbyterian to Catholic to no church background whatsoever. But if we're not careful, we can get so caught up on our traditions that it takes precedent over God's word. But listen, God's word should always take precedent over any tradition that you might have. If you can find it in Scripture, it's more important than the tradition. Come on, don't get quiet on me now. The second thing that the Greek word that Paul used to describe the word here actually means listening to understand. Listening to understand. If you are married or a parent, then you know exactly what Paul is talking about. Right? Write this down. There is a big difference in hearing and listening. You hear me? That was in the notes, but I thought that's kind of funny. You hear me? Listen? Yeah. My children can be sitting on the couch. Two feet from me, be on their phone, and I ask them to do something, and they will completely ignore me. And I will say, hey, did you hear me? But I thought about it, and I think that's the wrong question to ask. I should be asking, are you listening to me? Because I know you heard me. Because I'm two feet from you. And I told you. But here's what happened. They heard me, but they chose not to listen to me. You hear it? They heard. They're choosing not to listen. Tough question. I wonder if that's what God thinks about us at times. We hear him, but are we listening? Sarah and I have had a few fights over the years because of this. She got up pretty upset at me recently. She was telling me something important about one of the properties, and I was looking at her as she was talking to me, but I was also looking at my phone at the same time. And she finally just quit talking altogether. And if you're married, you know that's not good. <laughs> and I said, what? And she said, you aren't listening to me. My response was, yes, I am. Her response was, no, you're not. <laughs> My response is, I'm sure what I was doing was something vital. I was probably texting a church member about something just so important that I couldn't listen to my wife. 
Whereas if it was Sarah, she was probably watching her reel and not listening to me. That's a little joke, just seeing if you're listening. (laughs) Truthfully, I'm sure I was probably reading about the Chiefs. And they're going to be the first team in NFL history this year to win back-to-back-to-back Super Bowl championships. I'm sure that's what I was doing. I'm sure that's what it was. The truth is, and I hate to admit this in front of her, But I was hearing her, but I was choosing not to listen. I was looking right at her. I knew what she was saying, but I just wasn't listening. And that got me thinking, if we aren't careful, that's exactly what what you and I do when it comes to hearing the word of God. We will begin to hear things, but we aren't listening. You can be sitting in a service just like this, hearing what I'm saying, but you're already thinking about what you're doing after service. Where you're going for lunch. What do you got to do to get ready for lunch? What do you got to do to get the house ready? What do you got to do? Who's coming over? What are you going to do? You're already thinking about what's next. You're already thinking about your week next week. What do I got to do next week to get ready for the week? You're hearing, but are you listening? How many are familiar with the old saying, in one ear? I almost named the title of this message that, in one ear, out the other. You know, that's what we can do as Christians. It's just in one ear, out the other. This is what we do. We're going to come in here. Darren's going to sing four songs, then Sarah's going to come up here, and then she's going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then Chad's going to come up here, and we're going to talk, and this, and, we, and all of a sudden, you know what it is? Paul says it's a tradition, and if we're not careful, these traditions can make the Word of God to no effect, because what we come in, and we just start expecting, okay, I know what's going to take place, blah, da, 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 and here comes next, da, 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 da. And then this is next, da, 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 da. And so then it's just like, you know, really, have you seen that thing? It was just like, you know, num, 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 num. And this, some of this is what I sound like to some of you. And then you're like, is he about done? Can we, be, can we just be honest this morning? That's what makes the word of God of no effect in our lives. I don't know about you. I'll speak for myself. I sat through a lot of classes in school hearing what my teacher said, but choosing not to listen. I was preoccupied with other things. I didn't think what they were teaching was important for me to pay attention to. But how many know as you get older, you realize, man, that was vital, what they were teaching me. And it starts at a young age. We've been talking this to Ava and Jax because they're like, hey, mom and dad, do they do this, do this? Like, well, listen, in order for you to do that, that's why your teacher's now teaching you the basics of math right now. Because if you can get the basics of math right now, then you're going to be able to do the other things when you get into other grades. But if you don't get it now, you're not going to understand how to do the other things. Listen, it's the same thing in our spiritual lives. If we can't understand these basic things Paul talks about, then how do we expect to do the greater things? He goes on to say, I mean, some of you are babies. You've been in the church for years and years and years. You should be eating steak, but yet we're still passing out milk to people. If you're new to the faith, man, have all the milk that you need. Milk is nourishment. It's good for you. But at some point, I had to quit giving my kids milk and I had to start giving them real food. In the church, it's like we come and you expect the pastors to bring a big bottle. 
And if it's not warm, then you get cranky. I don't know about you. I'll choose a steak over milk any day. But when you're younger, you don't know the difference. Just give me the milk. But once you have a good steak, how many know you can keep your milk? Give me the steak. Listen, it's the same thing in our spiritual lives. There are more things that God wants you to experience, but it's time that you let go of the bottle. Amen? How about this one? This is kind of prevalent today. How many of you guys have ever sat through a Zoom or a virtual meeting and you multitask the whole time that the person was talking, and when you got done, you realized you had no idea what that person was talking about. But you were there. They saw you on the monitor. You were there. You were there. You were visually there. They could see you, you but you make sure that you mute. When you do this, make sure you mute. Because you don't want the blender going in the background. Right? You're there. But you're not there. Unfortunately, that's the way a lot of us are when it comes to spiritual things. We hear the word of God, but Paul says we don't need to just hear the word of God. We need to begin to listen to the word of God. And really, that's what that scripture says there. Not only should we be hearing and hearing the word of God, he says really what he's saying there is that you and I should be listening and listening to the word of God. And that's how faith comes. That's how faith grows. But the problem of it is most of us are not listening. I'm going to say a couple things that potentially will upset you, but I didn't write them. Philip sent them to me and asked me to put them in my notes. (laughs) I told him I didn't know if it was a good idea. I'm more of a love type preacher He said that I need to become more of a hell and fire and brimstone type teacher. (laughs) Anybody grew up in those days? Oh, yeah. I I think I literally went to the altar every Sunday night. It was so much, I mean, it was the fire and brimstone. So Philip said, here, here's a little bit of fire and brimstone. And I said, I don't know if I should say that. He said, no, go ahead and say it. I said, okay, I'll do it. (laughs) So if this upsets you, remember, this is coming from your teaching pastor, and you go talk to him. I wonder how many of us just sat through a Sunday morning or during our our Bible and prayer time, what we do when we're in one of those virtual meetings and we just check out. That we're simply just going through the motions so we can tick the box that said that we did our daily reading plan through version. Done. I did it. Now I'm moving on to the next part of my day. He also told me to tell you that <laughs> he thinks personally that everyone who comes to these doors should come in with a Bible. And he said also mention notebooks that we just got in the coffee shop. Now I'm making a little fun here, but how many know it's truth? We should come to church with a Bible and a notebook. And I know we live in whatever century this is. I always mess it up. Once the year changed. And I know your Bible could, in your notes is probably in your phone. And if that's the case, I'm okay with that. But my, what I'm not okay is with us all coming here and just not coming with our Bibles, not coming with our notes, expecting to hear something from God. Philip said that's not a good place to be. He said that we should come prepared to write down what is being taught to us. I said to his response, I don't want to be mean or make him try to feel bad. I said, I'll include this. I'll say, I want to make sure that they're just encourage them to do those things. But let me ask you a question, all jokes aside. 
Something for you to consider. What if you went down to OSU, they have a medical school down here. If you went down there and just went through a couple classes just to watch, do you think that you would walk into those students who are trying to get their degree to practice medicine, do you think they come in there every day with absolutely nothing? No backpack, no books, no pen, no highlighter, no laptop, no iPad, whatever, because I know it's different today. But the point being, do you think they show up to class and they're just like, all right, we're going to be learning how to operate on the brain today. <laughs> I was looking for a chair. They don't have my chair. And you just grab your chair and you just sit down. And they're going to give their lecture for 50 minutes. And you're just like, huh. that's interesting. Hmm. And you're just daydreaming. Do you think you would see that in med students? You know what you would see down there? They realize they're about to be taught some vital information. And they realize they're going to need this in the future. And so therefore, they're going to come prepared to write it down in whatever way that's best for them, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a pen, whether it's a paper, whether it's, I don't know, however they do it. But you know what? They're going to do something to be able to remember that information because they're going to need to use it. Or maybe we should start thinking like med students and realizing what's being taught on Sunday morning is just as vital for your spiritual life. Right. Philip said it's something for you to think about. <laughs> what if you and I had that same mindset as Christians when it came to hearing the word of God being taught? Amen? Are you with me? Acts 17.11. The people in Sand Springs were more open-minded than those in Sepulpa. Okay, I just want to make sure you're still listening. The people in Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. Listen to what it said. They were so glad to hear the message Paul was, the message Paul told them. Look what it says there. They studied the scriptures every day to make sure what they heard was really. What did they do? They studied every day to make sure what was being what they heard was really true. So here's something for you to consider. In my opinion, most Christians act like baby birds, not Bereans. You ever seen a baby bird? They're just there, mouth open, just waiting for what mom to come drop whatever it is into their mouth. If we're going to grow up spiritually, grow up in our lives, we need to quit acting like birds and start acting like Bereans. We need to begin to study and see what the Word of God says on a daily basis. Can somebody say amen to that? Now, can I share something with you this morning? I was going to wait and do this next week, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be honest. Is that okay? Every scripture that I have given you this morning has been completely wrong. Not one was right. Philip texted me early this morning, and I forgot to let him know that I did it on purpose. And he said, hey, uh, did you know that every scripture reference you used was not the right context? And I was like, sorry, meant to let you know that. Yes, it was for an illustration. Of course you caught it. I was going to let it go the whole week and see if anybody texted me, if anybody called, if anybody was like, what the heck? 
I don't see I, Second John. What the heck is that? 15. But you know what happens, unfortunately, on a day to, like this? Is we all just sit through here and we expect, because of who we are, that we can just be like, whatever he says, it's, it's true. It's just truth. It's true. I'm just going to take it for him, whatever, whatever he says. You need to be like the Bereans. Make sure what I'm telling you is the truth. Study it out for yourself. That way you can look at it. If you would have wrote any of that stuff down, you would have realized that's wrong. Way wrong. My challenge to you is begin taking notes and bringing your Bible every Sunday. Remember I told you in January we're going to go back to the basics in 2024. Amen? Does anybody like me grew up in church and you remember watching your mom or your grandparents get up and go to church and guess what they always brought with them? Did you ever see your parents leave the house without going to church without their Bibles? Oh, my mom always had her Bible. She always had a notebook. She always had a pen. She was always prepared. I can remember that even now as an adult, seeing her leave. She brought the word of God with her. You want to talk about a good tradition to have? That's a great tradition to have. Nowadays, we show up and we just sit there. I'm thankful for the screen sometimes, but sometimes I just want to shut it down and just maybe just leave faith up there and not put the scriptures up there and make you actually open up your own Bible and you read it out of your own Bible. Because we've become so accustomed to like, oh, it'll be on the screen for us. Here it comes. I don't need anything. No, faith comes by. And listening. And listening to the word of God. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I'll close with this. I'm going to give you one last scripture. And this will be the right scripture, by the way. <laughs> Worship team, you can join me back on stage. All jokes aside, I don't care what you bring, but I think we do have some of these notebooks that are in the coffee shop, and we don't make any money off of them. Whatever they cost us to get them in, we sell them for that. But you can also go by the dollar store. You can also go by Walmart. You can go by Target. They have bins there. You can get your own notebook. But the point just being, man, I would love to walk in next week to go upstairs on Sunday morning like I am now and seeing close to 70, 80 people up there being willing, taught, and coming to Sunday school because they understand just how important the basics are. Amen? How many know that's a big first step? And I like to see it starting next week as we come in. I like to see people coming in there and actually walking in with a Bible and a notebook and a pen and we're becoming prepared to hear what's being taught because we understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Can somebody say amen to that? Now, I hope you guys know that I love you. I'm not trying to come down on you, I'm not trying to sound mean. That's not me, that's not my heart, and more importantly, that's not our Heavenly Father's heart. But I do want to encourage you. There's something about growing in our faith and not just listening to what's being said, but really take, paying attention to it. Amen? Anybody want to take the challenge? Say, next week I'm coming with my Bible. I'm coming with my Bible. I'm coming with my notebook. I'm coming with a pen, and I'm going to be prepared. Last scripture is this. Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8 says this. Study this book of instructions. By the way, this is the right scripture. I was going to have them highlight it. We underlined it there. How, how are we supposed to do it? 
continually. And then what does it say to do? Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything that's written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. How many of you would like to see greater success in your life? How many of you would like to see greater prosperity, not just financially, but in other areas of your life? According to the word of God, here's your key right here. You and I have to study this thing continually. We have to meditate it, meditate on it day and night. Here's what I thought. You and I are always thinking about something anyway. We might as well be thinking about the word of God. I was told recently that the average person has around five to 6,000 thoughts a day. Five to 6,000 thoughts a day. So we're thinking all the time. The question is, what are we thinking about? What are we meditating on? Question. How many of you can survive on one meal a week physically? One meal per week. Meaning you can eat on Sunday, but that's it. And then you're going to fast on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you're going to eat only again on Sunday. How many of you can survive physically like that? You know what? Too many Christians are doing the same thing when it comes to our spiritual lives. We're only eating. We're only being fed on Sunday morning. And we're wondering why we're struggling in our spiritual lives. If you went and seen the doctor in the natural, man, you're, you're not, you're not, you're lost a lot of weight. You're not looking, you don't feel, what's going on? Tell me about, what are you resting of this? Well, I'm only eating one time a week. How many know that's a quick and easy fix for the doctor right there? Hey, you're going to have to eat more. Let me tell you something. It's the same thing when it comes to our spiritual lives. We need to begin to feed ourselves more. Amen? We stand your feet. If we're going to increase in our faith, we're going to find ways to study and hear the Word of God on a continuous basis. Listen to me. I don't care if it comes from a podcast while you're driving down the road, going for a walk, or working out. I don't care if it comes from teaching CDs like my father-in-law does. YouTube, the YouVersion app. How many know one, we live in a generation that we can hear the Word of God at any time and has access to it at anywhere? I'm going to encourage you to begin to do that. On your way to work, turn on the audio Bible. Turn on a podcast. Turn on YouTube. Begin to, and then begin to meditate on it day and night and let it see what it begins to do in your life. Amen? We close your eyes. Father, I thank you for the word that was spoken today. And Father, I pray that your word would challenge me and challenge them to go to a greater depth and walk with you. That we wouldn't just depend on a Sunday morning message, Lord God, but we begin to focus and make time for your word throughout the week, Lord God. And I pray, Holy Spirit, as we do that, that you would reveal to us truth. God, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation and understanding of who we are in you, and we begin to walk in that. And Father, I thank you that we'll listen closely to the voice of the Holy Spirit to remind us, to quicken us, to begin to do those things. And I thank you for that, in Christ's name. And everybody said? Hey, I wanna thank you for watching the Reach YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss a powerful message, live stream, or church update. You can find out so much more about what's happening here at the church by following us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as our website, Reach Church, 
www.ministryofgodsoutreach.us. While you're there, you can also help support the ministry and our vision of reaching and equipping people. Thanks for watching and God bless.